glorify your name, Lord. Ermaye shabra karo shatan doro musto shere sero doro basabo. Just reminded of the glory and the fire that comes from being inside of you. The breath that my spirit takes is the breath that I release into this meeting. It's the breath that I release into my family, into my city. And I want to remind you tonight that that's the legislation and that's the start of us legislating the glory and the fire of Yahweh into the earth. Father, we love you, we praise you, we exalt and magnify your holy name. I'm excited for the shift that's taken place. Father God, I'm excited for the revelational lights that has gone on. Father, the insight that your sons and daughters are walking in. I'm excited, Father, for what I'm seeing in the Spirit. Lord, I'm excited for the Ecclesia, just beginning to see, beginning to run with what you have made and given us. Father God, I thank you, Yahweh. Father, as you lift us up tonight, I pray, Father, that we will all, every one of us, not just go into the heavens and live and move and have our being there, but you will take us into a, a dimension of faith, into a dimension of hope and love that we've never been before, that we will walk in the fullness of your power. Father, I thank you for the actual physical manifestations of your power, Lord. But I'm not, I'm not talking about healing the sick and raising the dead. I'm not excluding that, but I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the absolute supernatural, Father, where our faces starts turning into a lion, ox, eagle man, Father, where we just, as sons and daughters, ignite in flames. Father, I pray, Lord, that that which I see in the Spirit will begin to manifest itself in the natural. I pray, Father, that we will walk in the streets and those who don't know you will run after us like they did after you, Yeshua, wanting to know what you carry, <clears throat> wanting to know what you have. Tonight, I pray that every eye in this room goes open. Not just open, but I pray for revelation on everything you've seen in your entire walk with Yahweh. I pray, Father, that as we enter into a recap, a revelation of what we've done during the last year, Father, I pray that you will absolutely ignite a flame of revelation in us, Lord, that that which we, where we, have, we have touched base on will become full on revelation and insight uh, with full wisdom and understanding regarding all things, Father, according to what you've given us on the destiny scroll for each individual in this room. I pray that you'll open up our hearts and pour into us all that we need for this time and this season, Father. We love you. We praise you in the name of Yeshua. Amen. Let it be light. Um, before we start with the, even with the evening, I, just, I really, I just want to, I want to bring honor to a lot of things that's happened in the spirit realm. There's a lot of a specific uh, gentleman. Um, I believe his name is Mervin, Marvin. Yes. Marvin um, Gorman has passed away, and it, it sounds really sad. But, but I believe in the same breath uh, that we were saying last week, and I just said this last week, that it's a time to honor the old, but the old will pass away. And, and I believe that I was just giving honor to what he carried, and not just him, but his family generation before him, that which they brought into the nation. I'm not just talking about him. I'm talking about that which, which has given us the steps to take to get to where we are today. And they are passing away. I'm not saying that they're all going to die. I'm just saying that movement, that, that type is going to literally just step aside as the new starts coming in. And so I just want to bring honor to him and his family and in the spirit just thank them for what they have done. But in the same breath, I also want to bring absolute great honor to my friend David. Yeah, you know, over the last two years, he's just been an absolute blessing. Him and his beautiful wife making sandwiches every single week. And not, not what sandwiches, the best sandwiches I've ever had in my life. 
And, and you know, I never complained, never did, and, you know, it, I, I just don't know what to say. I don't know how to express my, my, my gratitude to you. You're an absolute phenomenal man of God. You bless me. I love you. And I know that everyone in this room feels the same. And uh, what you, like I've said before, what, what you have experienced in Yahweh is not even the, the beginning of what He has for you. And this will be the beginning of the year where the Lord will propel you into everything that you're called to. And you will begin to see what that key that He's given you can do. And I believe that the Father is about to just open doors. And I really do see that as a financial increase yeah. um, beyond what you expected yeah. because you're not greedy. You're not running after that which is of the world, but the Father wants to bless you because of your faithfulness. And you have sowed and you have given, and the Lord's about to open yeah. doors. I can see it in the Spirit. And I'm excited for you and your family. Bless you, my friend. Thank you for everything you do for us. Exciting, isn't it? Yes. I really, I really, 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 really felt and a shift and I guess I guess what I can also say I want to know you guys know uh, Terry Spence uh, this is Terry Spence he, he I feel that he brought something um, over the weekend just just the blessing and just the same spirit as what I carry and, yes. and I really just love the guy and you know so um, I think that he kind of brought what I what I've been teaching to a, a level where everyone can understand it so we can kind of just go deeper into it so I believe that it was a good thing. I could feel the shift yes. that has taken in your heart. There's something different. And I know that everybody didn't experience him, and that's fine because I've said this before. It's not so much what happens at a meeting. It's what happens as yes. it comes out of the mouth. I remind you all that we are... Sorry, Beth. I remind you all that, um, that we are the oracles of Yahweh. So when we speak... Whatever is coming out of your mouth is the living word. Just like Yahweh, he says, let there be light. How many of you understand they're still finding um, uh, planets out there that they haven't seen? And if they've seen to the furthest point, they stole new things appearing daily because his word is living and it can never stop. Once it's come out and gone out, it does what it does. It comes to completion. And so when you speak, I need you to also remind yourself that it doesn't matter how many people there is. It's not about the people, although it is all about the people, but it's not about the people. It's about what's being spoken, and what's, that which goes into the atmosphere. It creates the shift that the Father has designed for the oracles of Yahweh to bring. Yes. Now, and I'm going to remind you that everyone's not oracles, so sorry. No. Matter of fact, everyone's not sons. That's right. Everyone's not priests. Yeah. And now you say, oh, well, that's not what the Bible says. Well, let me, let's think about it. Because right. because they say you're a priest doesn't mean you're operating as a priest. Mm -hmm. That's right. You're still scaffolding. If you're scaffolding, then you're not going to get what you're supposed to have. Right. Right. Just because someone says you're something doesn't mean you're something. That's right. Amen. Now look at me with that tongue. <laughs> <laughs> and I just believe that that in this time that the Father has laid before us a path that we can grab hold of and run on and become greater than what we've ever been before as a, as a nation, <coughs> as the Ecclesia, or we can just keep on going as we have been going and get what we've always got. <laughs> Sounds really exciting, but let's be honest now. I cannot carry on if I am going to get what I got. So what's the point? I want to get more of what I already have. I want something new, something deeper, higher, wider. I want that which I don't see. Because yes. right. yeah. <laughs> that's faith. He says, anything you do outside of faith is sin. Yeah. And faith is the substance of, uh, the evidence of things hoped for. And the blah, 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 blah. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. <laughs> And that's the thing. I believe the Father wants to get us to the place in the Spirit where our faith is at such a degree that as sons and daughters of the Most High, what we speak yeah. appears. Yes. What we speak yes. forms. Yes. And that's more than legislation. But in the same breath, it's a progressive dimension of growth that has to take place in you. And a growth doesn't come by what you hear. If growth comes by what you hear, if faith comes by what you hear, and how many of you know that everyone in this meeting would have been walking on water? Right? Because we are 
Olympic meeting goers. <laughs> right? So we hear the word all the time. And we're in the Bible the whole time, but it's, that's not what it means. It's not saying faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. It's not, it's not something you just hear or something you listen to. It's something you meditate on. It's something that you break up into portions and you dig into it. You engage it to such an extent that it becomes part of you, that it climbs into you, that it rips parts of you out and replaces it with yeah. new things. It takes you to dimensions of Yahweh so you can know Him at levels you never knew Him before. It is not just uh, something you hear, it's something you have to do. But in the same breath, it becomes something that you are. Yeah. Yeah. With you are reminded that the Kingdom of God is not what you do. That's right, that's right. The Kingdom of God is who you are. So we need to shift from doing, but in the same breath, I know it, it almost sounds like an oxymoron. But in the same breath, I have to do, because faith without works is dead. And how many of you understand, dead faith is no faith. Exciting, isn't it? So all we have been doing, and, and David doesn't know about this, <laughs> but the idea behind the next couple of weeks is to be preparing ourselves for an all-day spirit school. It will probably be the same as last time. If there's time or space available in the venue, it will start at 2 and it will end at 6 so that Margie and her group can do their, their um, uh, IHOP prayer meeting thing in Majiki. Um, but the idea is that we recap the whole year over the next two weeks and then you guys have to choose three subjects that you want to go over again. I really believe that this is a year of revelation, a, real, a, a year of this stuff hitting home and we begin to walk in it because the Father has shown me what the manifestation of this is going to look like and I'm excited. Me too. Because I believe we are beginning to believe what He's been saying. Yeah. Yes. But what is exciting for me even more, it is the outcasts, the um, religious outcasts. It sounds terrible because I hate the word religion, but it's those who have been rejected by the church. As, as cuckoo. <laughs> Racy, we That's love me. <laughs> That's going to stand out. That's right. That's going to be propelled. Yes. And yes. who is going to be placed yes. on high mountains. Yes. Where the world, especially the Ecclesia, can see yes. what they've been done. As a matter of fact, and like Gracie, if I can almost directly speak to you, and I want you to be reminded of this, it is the fact yes. that which is done yes. in the Spirit yes. in this year is going to begin to reflect yes. in the knowledge yes. of the leaders yes. of what has happened, so that that which we see in the natural, we begin to realize first happened in the Spirit. Yes. And it's those men and women that have slaved in the Spirit and no one has seen what they've done that's going to be revealed because all of a sudden we're going to have great revival and see great miracles and the leaders are going to realize it's the ones we've rejected that's echoed and brought this in to the nation. I'm excited. But as a matter of fact, I'm thinking, hmm, I might need some more rejection. Yes. Yes. Okay, if you want to reject me right now, this is your last chance. Yes. Okay. I want, to, I want to kind of start by reminding you of your mountain. Reminding you of the power that you walk in as a Christian. A, a little Christ. A little anointed one. Because the idea behind who you are is the fact that you have the ability to shift nations into place, that you as a Christian has the ability to, through your mountain, bring in the fullness of His glory everywhere you go. Like He says, wherever you put your foot, that place belongs to you. Now I want to remind you in that same breath that it's not so much everything that I touch belongs to me, everywhere I put my foot belongs to me. The idea is it's always been mine. But as I begin to walk through my salvation and I place that into the earth, that which I walk in becomes mine. Because that which I take responsibility for, I have authority over. And the desire of the Father, although He said, I've given all authority to the, to the church, the ecclesia, the idea behind you and your authority is that you first take responsibility for it. Because if you do not take responsibility for something, you cannot have authority over it. 
And so, for example, if I drive a demon out of somebody, I first have to take responsibility for her life. Because I can't just say, go in the name of Jesus and forget and, uh, and think, well, it's going to be okay from now on. Because how many of you understand if he's not ready or he's not ready, that demonic entity to come back with seven greater and stronger than him, bringing more devastation to that life. So I first have to take responsibility over that life. I have to begin to understand as a father, as a mother, that I need to first love and embrace that which is in front of me so that I can have it in my heart. So what I have in my heart, I can change. Yes. And I have to remind myself that Yeshua put his foot on the earth and he began to change the atmosphere. He had the ability through intimacy, intimacy uh, by carrying the heart of Yahweh into the earth. That's why he said, I only see, I only do what I see my father do. He had the ability to look his father in the eyes. Now, I, I want to say that because it's something we've forgotten or something we have heard and read so many times but never took, took hold of. Because we've believed for too many years that I can't see him. Because there's scriptures that says, if you see God, you'll surely die. Yeah. But then what did Jesus do different? Why could Jesus see what his father do and then do it? Why could he see his father? Why could, was there something different about him? No, of course not. Because if he wasn't Yeshua, fully man, then he can't be my example. He had to give up his deity and then everything he did according to that uh, revelation is mine for my inheritance. But there's more than just inheritance. Right? Because everything he was on the earth is my inheritance, but I, he's always my example. So everything he was before he was born is mine because... I'm in Him, He's the light that I carry, He's the light that I wear. Yeah. In the same breath of His resurrection and everything He is up to this point, I'm clothed in Him, which means that is what, what I am. He didn't die for me, He died as me. Yeah. Yeah. So the idea behind changing the atmosphere is understanding that there's a mountain that is ruled by a demonic entity, not just a mountain, but mountains in the earth. Matter of fact, I believe mountains on top of mountains where we are sons and daughters we have never taken what's meant to be ours and the enemy has taken that which is available. Mm. Because I remind you that the enemy doesn't have a kingdom. That's right. We've always said this, that the kingdom of darkness. No, no, it's a kingdom in darkness. It's not a kingdom of darkness. The kingdom of darkness does not exist. Satan does not have rights to anything lest we've given it to him. But so, we are as sons and daughters of the Most High beginning to take back that which we have lost through a lack of uh, understanding, a lack of knowledge. That's why he says, my people perish because of lack of knowledge. Mm -hmm. Right? And not, not my people perish because of the lack of the Bible. Right. <laughs> yeah. so when we now are said there was no such thing as the Bible. So the idea behind this is having a knowledge in the spirit of who you are. Yeah. What the Father has called you to individually and corporately. What power does the Ecclesia have? What dimension of glory and fire are we supposed to walk in? If we have people like Enoch and Moses and Elijah and Elijah as our examples, if we have people like Jesus and Peter and Paul as our examples, then what on earth are we doing? Yeah. There's a serious scaffolding happening in the church and something needs to shift. And the only way that it can shift is if we realize through revelation who we are and what we can do. The idea behind it is if I put my foot down, there should be an earthquake. Yes. <laughs> and I was driving in the car this, uh, this morning after a, a pastor's meeting. And I was, I don't know what people would have thought that was looking at me through the window. But I was going like this. <laughs> <laughs> and it wasn't, it wasn't working. Yeah, I know. But I was, I was going like this, waiting for the blue flame that I see burning on me yeah. in, in the spirit realm at all times. Whereas uh, I met with one of the prophets of old and he said to me that uh, what you experience in the spirit is about to start getting manifested in the natural. So I'm sitting in the car going and I'm saying to the Lord, there's no blue flame and it might be a spiritual flame burning, but I don't want it to be a spiritual flame. Because a spiritual flame can't be seen by the world. But a real flame is what they're going to be staring at. Yes. You know, Jesus walks through somebody. Yes. He just walks through me. Right. Then there's revival when he comes back. That's right. <laughs> so a spiritual flame is not going to do it for me. That's right. I can't spiritually walk through somebody and then come back and there's revival. 
There has to be a physical manifestation of the natural. So the idea behind it is to legislate that which I see and bring it. But I can't just bring it because my soul, which is monkey-like, yeah. <laughs> maybe not your soul, but mine is slightly monkey-like, and it won't allow me to bring what I see in the spirit back into the natural. So it's a process of change and manifestation that needs to take place in my soul where I begin to shift the way I think. And that is not just by meditating on the Word of God, it's understanding that there's 22 living creatures in the Kingdom of Heaven that I can engage, that has great intent, meaning for me to propel myself deeper into what the Father wants me to legislate, so that when I put my foot in the earth, I begin to change the atmosphere. Every time I go to the Kingdom of Heaven, which is every single day of my life, sometimes longer, sometimes less. Sometimes I'm, sc I'm scaffolding, sometimes I'm not. Sometimes I'm really focused, other times I'm snoring. <laughs> the night watch. The night watch. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you for the Holy Ghost. <laughs> but the idea is that I begin to understand that the Father's desire for me is to grow yeah. to such an extent yeah. that when I begin to realize who I am, everything falls into place. Yes. When the church begins to, to, to govern the earth, not the president. I don't care how cute he is. I don't care. I don't care how born again he is. So now we're putting our faith into a baby Christian's hands. We have to begin to understand that when I walk into a meeting, I change the atmosphere. When I meet a man of God, I have him in my heart and I change yeah. what needs to be changed. Yeah. When I walk into anywhere, into a shopping center, into a gym, into a school, because I'm there, I shift things into place. Now that might not be seen, but it is immediately felt. You know, when my family comes into the gym where we train, people stop and run to us. Hey, LaRue family, how you doing? Why? I know we're extremely cute and I'm extremely handsome. The father came, my wife's really beautiful. But it's, it can't just be that. As a matter of fact, I think I might have shared this with you, I'm not too sure, but I'm sitting in the gym and now it's right at the end. Now let me be honest with you, right at the end, fresh is not what I'm thinking. When I go, I'm going, it's like a dead animal. Now, I'm not trying to boast in my stink. I'm just putting it out there. So this gentleman, well-built man, just, his wife just gave birth to uh, a son, so I know he's not. And he's sitting there and he says to me, I don't know what it is, but when I'm around you, there's a smell that gives me joy. And I'm thinking, Dude, it's man sweat. If you want to vomit, turn that way. But he says to me, he says, no, it's not like that. It's, it's something that I can't explain. And once I've smelt it on you, I just feel joy. And I remember, I just had coffee. You know, coffee's not bad, but it does give you a coffee breath. So it's not going to go, and the person's going to die. It's just going to be, woo. You know, it's coffee breath. It's not that bad. But I remember having to pray for somebody right after I had a cup of coffee. So I was like, eh, if you don't mind my coffee breath, let's pray. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember while I was praying, or when I was done, the guy said to me, I don't know what it is, but, but there was like a, 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 a fragrance coming from your breath. Yes. Thinking it's coffee. <laughs> nicotine. I don't know, nicotine, caffeine. <laughs> He's like, no, it was, a, it was like an incense. Yes. Yes. Something heavenly. Awesome. And I really believe that that is part of the legislation, that which is supposed to bring into the atmosphere that which we see. Now, it's only a smell. For now, it's just a smell. I can handle a smell. But there's something physical that I'm bringing back in. You know, I've shared with you going into the Father, taking a deep breath, yeah. coming back in. I'm sitting at, on a machine and I breathe that breath out and I literally see everyone in that atmosphere around me stop and looking around because they felt something yeah. shift. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, to me, that's the manifestation yeah. of what I'm experiencing yeah. in the Spirit. Now, it's small little things, but very soon I'm going to do this and there's going to be a blue flame burning on my hand. Yeah. 
I see everyone's going to start going like this. And then people are going to think, oh God, these Christians are crazy. But, but soon things are going to start happening. You know, I accidentally slip and almost go into the door and fall right through the door. We can't even begin to fathom that. But, but the, the idea behind it is that I bring that, that which I see in the Spirit into my today, right here, right now. And it might be the glory and the fire of Yahweh, but it could also be the atmosphere that's there. Because I remind you, in that atmosphere, there's no death. There's no death. It's only life. It goes beyond what we can fathom. Because we just can't fathom it. You know, we, we look at the angels and they go, holy, holy, holy. And in our... I don't want to say blonde, because there's too many pretty blonde ladies in the church today. <laughs> I don't see two, hello, um, three, so I don't want to say blind, but in our, in our lack of understanding, we, we think that they're talking about God being sinless. They are in the kingdom of heaven where there's no record of sin. They're not making a reference to him being sinless. They're looking at him through the eyes of the spirit of the fear of the Lord, and they're going, holy, holy. Wow, jeez, this guy's phenomenal, like, oh my goodness. There's not, no explanation of what they're seeing, they can't put it into words, it's just awe. Because they're staring at that which reflects onto them, which is just pure revelation and life and light and love that they can't even express in any other way, but to just go, wow. Imagine we bring that atmosphere into our today. What and how the atmosphere that we live in begins to change. And of course, the more you walk in that kingdom, the easier it is to bring that into your right now. The idea... The yeah, Spirit School is to not just get you to know your position in Christ, but to get rid of those things in your life that stops you from being propelled deeper into the things of Yahweh. Yeah. Now, we've dealt with the familiar spirits before, but, but just to go over it, I want to remind you that the idea of the cross has is, is, is really always been to not just be reminded of what Yeshua did, but to take everything in yeah. your life yes. that's not of God yes. and put it to the cross. Yes. 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 Crucify it right there next to Him. Yes. Because He's taken all yes. of your sin, and not just your sin, all the sins of the world. As a matter of fact, the only way He could die, the only way that He could go into Hades was to be covered in a cloak of sin. That's the only way He could do it. Now, you understand, Yeshua could raise someone from the dead, He could be raised from the dead. He could do all kinds of things, but the one thing God cannot do and didn't even know how to do was die. Yes. The biggest miracle of that whole three-day yes. scenario was Him dying. Yeah. Yeah. Because the only way He could die was to pour all the sins of the world upon Him. <coughs> him standing in that place where the, the enemy goes, yes, we got Him. Yeah. And then He just takes that cloak of sin off. And that cloak of light in him, over him begins to shine. Yeah. And he literally takes the enemy by the nostrils and pulls him, drags him through that kingdom, defeated. Yes. Right. So that all other demonic entities can see that he is, he is absolutely of no value, yeah. nullified. No, because in the blood and in that which Yeshua did for us, we stand behind the veil. Right. We are living in a different kingdom. That's why in this kingdom... As much as I physically live here and I can walk to and fro through my spirit in the earth and do and legislate what needs to be brought and legislated, I do not operate from this realm. I operate out of the kingdom of heaven through the veil, through the, through the blood. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So that I do not constantly see demons. Right. Amen. And when I do see a demon, it better be a dragon or a giant that I can slay. That's right. Amen. Cut up. Uh -huh. Murder. Blood and guts. Can I even say that? Yes. Familiar spirits is those things in your life that wants to hang on. 
It's, it's so much so, it's either habitual sins or it's just the way you feel about things. Where, for example, you're coming to church and your pastor doesn't greet you. Oh my goodness. <laughs> they don't love you. They don't like you. How many of you have ever felt that? That's a familiar spirit. How do we deal with those spirits? We put them to the cross. We beat the snot out of them. It's a privilege. It's fun. And they will always want to come back like a dog returns to his own vomit. So every demonic entity that's familiar with your ways would want to turn, re return. And I want to remind you that a familiar spirit can come down a generation. Yeah. It has to be dealt with. You have to literally give up that which holds on to you. But it's done by choice. You can in the name of Jesus until you turn blue in your face. That's right. That's right. Now I'm not nullifying or bringing the name of Jesus to less value. Right. But you have to choose it. But I can pray over you in the, in the name of Jesus until I turn blue in my face. If you do not choose to step away from that way of thinking, yes. then there's no victory. That's right. That's right. Come on. Come on. And a familiar spirit has rights to be there. That's right. Because that's what you choose. It doesn't have to be sin. That's right. But if there's a, a familiar spirit of rejection over your life, you're choosing to feel rejected. I'm going to understand. You can't choose whether people reject you or not, but you can, you can choose whether you're going to feel rejected. That's right. Amen. That's right. Because a familiar spirit reminds you, well, you used to be ran by your feelings. That was your entire life. Yeah. Right. Just go back to that. They don't like you. <laughs> they don't love you. They don't want you here. That's why they don't greet you. They're rejecting you because they don't want to be around you. Just go somewhere else. <laughs> and how do, we, how do we get rid of that? <laughs> See, I, I can't deal with this in the natural. It has to happen in the spirit realm. Yes. Now, I can go through all kinds of deliverance and someone can pray a nice prayer over me and it can be nine different prayers that I have yes. to pray because there's nine different things that I have to link with this and then that scripture has to come from there and this one has to be put there so that it all just fall into a program that we've put into a little box so God can just fit into my theology. Or we can just understand that the cross is there for me because at the end of the day, let me promise you something, although we don't believe it as I'm going to say it, no one else can do for you what you can do for yourself. That's right. No, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not talking about, well, you know, I don't need you because I can't live without any of you. Because we are one in the Spirit. We need each other. That's why we are the ecclesia. We are the ones who think alike. We are the body of Christ. I can't say to my toe, you know, you stay at home today, you irritate me. It's just not going to work. It works together. It operates together. But in the same breath, I have to get to the place in my life where I deal with the issues I have. Yes. Yes. And I deal with the issues like what I have by going into the kingdom of heaven, yes. sitting at the throne, presenting myself to Yahweh as a living sacrifice. Yes. Exciting, isn't it? Yes. See, I present myself to Him as a living sacrifice so that He could deal with the thoughts and the intents of my heart. The idea behind presenting myself to Him as a sacrifice daily is so that I begin to understand that although I've been a Christian for 25 years, and although I have been repenting of many things, and I've went through all kinds of deliverance, and as I stand before you today, I might, might have lived a holy life, and I might feel really pure, and even though there's the blood of Yeshua covering me that makes me as white as snow, when He looks at my heart, it's black. And I, I say that because the high priest was literally the holiest man in the nation. Yeah, right. And let me explain, there's no one that could possibly be holier than him. Mm. First of all, his life depends on it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So he's going to make sure that there's nothing in his life. And then he presents himself to the Father in the heavens. And the Lord said, okay, just get this guy some clean clothes. Because he's filthy. Because it's the intent of the heart. It's what's inside the heart. And so the idea behind this is that as I divide my soul and spirit, 
I also have to look at the thoughts and intent of my heart. That's why the process of engaging with Holy Spirit in my life is so important. Because Holy Spirit is the one that, that reminds me that the thought process has to change. And in the same breath, that when it comes to the intent of my heart, I have to be reminded that it all has to be taken from my spirit being, the primary me, that's already perfected. Yeah. And that revelation of who I am needs to be poured in through my heart, into my soul, which is my, 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 my way of thinking, my brain, where I have to begin to understand that my thoughts are no longer what it wants to be, it is what I put in there. Right. And if you think that Satan can't read your thoughts, think again. That's right. Because he can. That's one of his greatest tactics. Is to know what you're thinking and tempting you accordingly. So I have to purify my thoughts. Without that mind of Christ. That is going to a whole other subject. Because the way we communicate... I don't believe it's the way the Father has wanted the body of Christ, the ecclesia, to communicate. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Because I could look at you at yeah. the Spirit and we can communicate. Yeah. That's right. But it's a process of change that needs to take place in our hearts. Because if my thoughts are not pure, I can't communicate with you. If your thoughts are not pure, we cannot communicate. As a matter of fact, if I'm in the kingdom of heaven, I don't talk. How many of you have been in the heavens? It's not a conversation, it's a knowing. Everything that takes place is a knowing. When I speak to, to wisdom, she doesn't talk to me. When I speak to knowledge, she doesn't talk to me. There's no actual communication. Right. It's a knowing. Yeah. Because everyone and all things are one. Mm. Yes. Now there's a vibration and a frequency that releases the sound. Yes. And everything that's thought, everything that is communicated by or with, mm. that comes into the earth and that's what brings everything into place. Yeah. <laughs> that's why what we say is so important because it was... Never meant to be said. Right. But once the Father has given us the ability to speak because of the skins. Don't look at me with that tone. Because of the change of who I am. The shift from my spirit right. out of my body. Or into my body. My soul into my body. Yeah. Skins placed and I'm pushed into a natural realm. Right. Where I now have dominion over the earth. But I no longer have the fullness of who I am. I have to get born again to step back into that place. Yeah. And then there has to be another shift where my spirit has to step out because that's my primary being and my soul and my body has to step into my spirit. Yes. That's, by the way, how Yeshua operated and walked the earth. Yes. But of course we have an understanding of spirit and I believe that's why we call Holy, Holy Spirit Holy Ghost. Isn't that just a little bit scary? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've always been scared of ghosts, so when I met Holy Ghost, I was like, whoa, what you gonna do? <laughs> so we think my spirit is not something physical. My, my spirit is unseen and, and spiritual. I, I can't physically manifest it. And so it will never physically manifest. I don't know if you understand that. But when I begin to believe that my spirit is me, and my soul is me. And my body is just the place that I live in. But in the same breath, it's me. Because I don't even understand. I don't look in the spirit like I look in the flesh. I look slightly different. But if you see me in the spirit, you will recognize me as Gustav. But not because of my flesh. Because of my scroll and what I carry as a spirit being. So as we begin to realize that spiritually we need to enhance ourselves in the natural, we begin to have the ability to do things through our spirit being in the natural realm. For example, someone's busy preaching, he's busy preaching a message, and while he's preaching, he has an encounter where his spirit leaves his body, and he goes to Russia, knocks on a door, and a little girl opens the door, and he begins to speak to her and pray with her for 40 minutes. And when he comes back, everything is normal. He does his altar call, does what he does, and the meeting is finished. When he looks back at the recording, when that encounter started, on the video, his body went transparent. No one else saw it. But he physically, his spirit physically went and engaged with another person. Uh, David Hogan shares a testimony where he was at a conference, and um, a gentleman comes up to him that he's never seen in his life. 
and says to him, thank you. Thank you for bringing us that building on your 18-wheel truck. Yes. <laughs> and he's like, and the guy takes out the notes and shows him the date of deliverance yes. and his signature on the paper. Yes. Where he literally drove a truck yeah. to this place, mm -hmm. dropped off everything, and then drove back. Mm -hmm. And then, in the same breath, he goes, and another man shows him a photo where him and this guy's on a picture on his cell phone with the date. Now, subconsciously in his mind, he's thinking, none of these things are possible because I was in Germany right. on that date. <laughs> On that specific time of both the photos, I was in Germany. But his spirit multiplied and he was in all of these places at the same time. How do we explain that? It's an engagement of your spirit so that your spirit becomes the primary. Once your spirit is the primary, you can touch and feel the physical with it. Soon. We shall have understand. Yes. But the idea behind my, 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 my thoughts and intents of the heart is that I present myself to the Father so that He cannot just change my, my spirit to such an extent that it affects my soul and my body. But the idea is that that which I have been corrupted by yes. is presented in my spirit to the Father and He begins to clean me out. Yes. Because the idea of going in, I don't go in because I'm ready. I don't go in because I'm holy. I don't go in because I'm perfect. I go in so He can clean me, so He can perfect me, so He can make me what I'm meant to be. So don't think that this is just for the holy. Because then I wouldn't be ministering to you. And then my wife, she's my evidence. I kind of suck at some things. In the same breath... It's a constant reminder for you that you have Yahweh ordaining your steps. Yes, yes. Now, I'm changing, what do you call it, uh, subjects every now and then. I hope you guys catch when I'm changing a subject. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, because I can't, I try, I try and work everything in together like a flow, but it's not always possible. Anyway. So, the idea behind the Father ordaining your steps is you being constantly reminding or reminded that everything you do up to this point in your life was not ordained by Yahweh. Do you believe that? Oh, yes. And I know people don't understand or believe this, but Yahweh doesn't care who you marry. It's not on your scroll who you have to marry. I had never seen it on my scroll because he's given me an option. Yes. He showed me who would be a good idea. And not just that, he shows me according to his word what would be a good principle to follow when I choose. Yes. But he's not going to choose someone for me because that takes away my choice. Yes. But in the same breath, the idea behind everything he does is that he has ordained my steps, my steps. And what I choose to do with what he's given me to walk in is my choice. He will not force me into anything. And a matter of fact, if I did not agree to it on my destiny scroll, He will not push me into it. <clears throat> anything that's not on your scroll and you've done it, is works of iniquity. That sounds exciting because some of us don't even know our destiny scroll, yet we've done many things. I remember prophesying over someone today, and as I looked into his life, which I personally feel is none of my business, but in the same breath, we are one, we are the body of Christ, so it's all of my business. Right. I, I prophesy over him and speak over him what I see. I realize that he's done many, 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 many great things in the earth. Yeah. Blessed many people, spoke many powerful words, ministered many powerful messages, but haven't touched his scroll yet. Yes. Yes. Haven't begun to walk in what the Father has for him. And as I began to prophesy and speak this over him, I saw the light in him go on. Maybe not to the extent that I would like it to have gone on, but I begin to see that he realizes that what he has done up to this point is nothing compared to what the Father has for him. Because only once you start walking in what the Father has called you to, there's a freedom of who you are expressed in the earth that brings the full power. See, when, when you came into your mother's womb, you had to, before you entered, you agreed to certain things. Matter of fact, every single step according to the fullness 
of the will of Yahweh in you has been ordained for you. But when you came into the picture and Satan came into the picture, there was a big fat mess involved. Yes. Right? Because we choose the other way. We do stupid things. Satan redirects us through our thoughts and temptations. And before we know it, we're not doing anything that we're supposed to. As a matter of fact, before we know it, we're in a big fat mess. Then we get born again and slowly but surely we try through the Holy Spirit, through our sons and our daughters and our brothers and our sisters. We, they try and propel us, our pastors and our leaders, try to push us back onto par. Yeah. But the idea at the end of the day is you have to physically go into the spirit realm, yeah. into the court of scrolls where you would see and find the scroll with your name on it. Now, I've gone through this before. I don't know if it works like that for everybody. But for me, I had to take that scroll and it went into my being. It became one with me. But I still couldn't read it because when I opened it, I couldn't read it. I couldn't understand what it said. So it just went into me and became one with me. But then in the same breath, I was in the process of presenting myself to Yeshua to prepare me for to become a living sacrifice to the Father. And when I presented myself to the Father, all of a sudden, the scroll that was in me became like a, I've shared this before, just literally a hologram appeared in front of me of exactly what needs to happen over the next five years. And then of course there will be another section of it released as I get closer to the end of the five years and that will start running in the exact same way, maybe in a different way, but slowly it will begin to show you more and it's your choice whether you're going to let him propel you into that dimension yes. through what you decide. Yes. Yes. Now I know that we would we say things like, Lord, take my life and do with it what you want to. And that's a good prayer. I mean, that's wonderful. That's what we need to do. But in the same breath, as I grow and mature, the Father changes towards me. Because in the beginning, how many of you have had children? In the beginning, what you have to do is you have to pick up the baby and place him on your breast. Well, not, not me, but if you're, if you're the mother. You have to put him on the breast. And then as he grows older, he would want to go to the breast by himself. And then, of course, he does the very exciting, thrilling thing called, we call it number two, just so that we cannot actually have to think or say the actual thing, because it's disgusting. So he does number two. And he does that for a very long time. Very, 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 very long. And so you have to clean it, and you have to feed him, and he literally can't do anything for himself. But then there's a day where he says, party. And then you take the diaper off, and he goes to the toilet. And he does number one, and he's very excited about it. Then he still does number two on the floor, or in the bath, or somewhere in a diaper that you have to clean. Very exciting. But then there's a day where he starts doing all these things by himself. He wants to feed himself, he wants to eat himself. So there's less responsibility to be in his face from the father and the mother. And I look at my, my 11 year old, I hardly have to do anything for him. Except I have to beg him. <laughs> beg him to brush his teeth. But he does it himself, I don't have to do it for him anymore. I have to beg him to put clean socks on. Because when he walks into the room and the entire nation shifts to one side, you begin to realize that you need new socks, bro. You know, when, when, when he wakes up in the morning and you say, come eat, you know, I still make their breakfast for them because it's just quicker, but he's changed. I don't have to do stuff for him anymore. Yeah. And the father really wants you to get to that place where he doesn't have to do everything for you. Because how many of you understand? We can't be babies forever. If I want to become a son in the house of Yahweh, He can't do everything for me. I have to shift my thinking because we still go, uh, Lord, will you do this? Well, Lord, will you heal this? Lord, will you go, I need money, I need this, Lord, this, this. And you're thinking, okay, wait, I don't understand what you say. I'm the king. You're not. Why are you ordering me around? Why are you telling me what to do if I've given you all the authority, I've given you dominion, you have to go do it. It's called protocol, and we've missed it. <laughs> you guys still okay? So his desire for you is to begin to understand that which he's pushing you into. But he's again in the same breath, not pushing you as per se. He's allowing you to see and read what's yours, and for you to take it by force and run with it. Because the enemy is going to do everything in his power to stop you from going into that. 
Then I go in the same breath. I always say that. And I need to stop saying it. I irritate myself saying it all the time. In, in the same breath, I just want to remind you. In the same breath, I just want to remind you. Shut it up. I have to get to the place in my life where I allow the angelic to be part of all that the Father has made available. Because I can't engage with my destiny scroll without the help of my angels. Now, in, in my understanding, as far as I know and what I've experienced and, and spoken to and chat with and had many conversations with, I have two massive angels on my side that's always with me. Uh -huh. I've said to you that it is passion and it is focus. Yeah. But in the same breath, I have another angel that is linked not just to me, but to my bloodline and to my family that helps us bringing across a message that's revealed to us so that those that I minister to can understand. Yeah. And his name is Ezekiel. Yeah. He looks different than the two to my side. As a matter of fact, the two to my side, one is a darker, darker color skin and, and the other is lighter. And they both look like me. Extremely handsome. Well. <laughs> and, and Ezekiel, he looks slightly different. He's got long blonde hair and he's got a light radiant and he, out of him and he wears different clothing. He has a sash over his shoulder and he has a massive sword. But yet he's not a fighter, but it's what he presents. But he looks different. There's many other angelic beings that I've communicated with and I've noticed in my life everything that needs to happen, every mandate given to me in the, the Court of Scrolls, every mandate I've taken out of the Court of Scrolls, every mandate I've taken out of the angelic um, court, every mandate that has taken place from out of the Court of War, I had to have angels with me to do what needs to be done. Because the Father wants to get you to the place where you realize as one with legislative power, you don't have to war. Right. That's right. Because it's his servants that war on your behalf. But you're the one with the authority. Because Yeshua is the captain, the host of the army, the Lord of hosts. And I, or let me say, he represents who I am. Because it says Yeshua, Yahweh, Yeshua is on the right hand of Yahweh. And then it talks about me being in him at the right hand of the Father. So I am the right hand of the Father. The right hand man, co heir that all goes together. All those scriptures comes, brings me to a conclusion believing that I am that which the Father uses for everything He needs. Yeah. Yes. But in the same breath, I want to remind you that Yeshua, Yahweh, or the Father, and Holy Spirit is one. Yeah. I've said that before. If you go to the kingdom of heaven, there's not three thrones and they each sit separately. They operate as one. They are one. Right. There's yeah. kingdoms within the kingdom of heaven that... There's no angelic beings. There's no other creation except man and Yahweh. And that's a little bit more of a serious realm where he shifts his sons and daughters into place and position so we can do, begin to do the works that he's called us to. Yes. As kings. It's a dimension of growth that has to take place in you. Yeah. Are you guys still okay? Yes. Oh, yes. So I would urge you as much as I can to engage with the angels. Now I remind you. Oh, help me Jesus. Stop saying remind you. Um, the idea behind the angelic realm is that you see that according to the Word of God, there's around, just around His throne, there's a hundred million angels. 10,000 times 10,000 mm -hmm. equals 100 million just around His throne. Then there's layers because there's seven kingdoms. There might be more, as far as I've been taught up to this point, what I've seen up to this point, is that there's seven kingdoms. There might be more, because now scientists are beginning to see, or beginning to believe that there's more than one universe. Not right. galaxy, as far as I know, there's up to 900 billion galaxies. And they are growing. So the expanse of what we have known up to this point is, is way vast than what it, it could possibly be, or... What we know is less than what is actually out there. And the Father wants us to begin to understand that every one of the angelic beings that is out there, millions and millions and millions of them, is all there for yeah. you. Yeah. Because they are the servants in the house that you live in. That's why he says there's no other creation on the planet or in any form of universe or in any kingdom that is made or created in the image of Yahweh but you. My son, yes. my daughter. Yes. <coughs> now in the same breath, there's no thing of command. I don't command angels. Just like I don't command God. But in the same breath, it's just a saying. 
because I have the ability as a son of God to command, but because of relationship, because of submission one to another, because of love, because of honor, we just speak the word. In the same breath, it's not someone that lives in my house that I pay a salary to that I can fire when they do something wrong. It is someone that has more right to be than I have, yet in the same breath not. But because of the way they present themselves and the honor they bring to the house of the Father, I have to walk in that same honor towards them. And let me tell you, if you dishonor an angel, you will have absolutely nothing from him. Not that he will reject you, he won't speak to you. He won't reveal himself to you. Even if you can see, you will not see him. Are you guys okay? Yes. And of course, all of this comes to a dimension of growth where we begin to understand that, that His desire behind everything He wants to teach you, everything He wants to bring to you in the kingdom of heaven, every desire of His heart is so that the sons and the daughters can be image bearers. Now, I'm going to stop with this one. Um, because our time is running out and you guys are looking at me with a tone of voice and it looks like the V8's going... <laughs> you guys okay? I keep asking you to okay because I, I know you've had a long day and I understand it is Tuesday. It is already in the evening and you've heard all this stuff before. So it's just a recap. So just hold on to your chair and let's uh, finish with this last one. The idea is... No, where is the last one? The idea is we begin to understand that Yahweh has always wanted a people that looks like Him. Yes. He's never had a people that looks like Him. Right. Yes, His blood has opened the doorway for us to step into, right. to look like Him, to operate like Him. But Yeshua in His fullness has done things that the church has never even touched. Right. That the church has never even begun to walk in. And then He goes as far as to say, and you'll do greater things. Right. So in essence, the image that's left has not even been walked in. And then, of course, there's more than just the image for us to walk in. Yeah. It's a dimension that we as sons and daughters have to open and step into and propel into the earth that has not been. Because the image of Yahweh has not been reflected in the sons. Exciting, isn't it? Yeah. I believe that in this time and season, and I always say this, but I need you to understand it, it is not just going to happen. It's not an impartation. It's not going to come by you going through a takeaway where you can pay now, go through and get your order at the other, t a a other window. It's not going to happen like that. As a matter of fact, I remind you, as a matter of fact, I tell you that nothing like that in the kingdom of heaven works like that. A son can, be, can receive an impartation from a father, but I cannot impart to you if you're not a son or daughter. If you have not spent intimate quality time with me as a, a, a man or a woman that is imparting to you. It's not something that just comes overnight. Jesus took three years to impart <coughs> to his disciples what they needed. And it really wasn't all that. It wasn't enough because they all still deserted him. But we want uh, someone to lay hands on us and receive everything they have. <clears throat> First of all, if I'm doing that, I'm deceiving you. I'm giving you a false truth Amen. and a false hope. Because you go back home and you've received nothing. You're all hyped up in the meeting, but when you go home, there's nothing there. And as time goes on, what you did receive fades. Because it's not something you've walked in. You cannot consistently act in a way that's inconsistent to you. Yeah. And impartation comes with a walk. Yeah. Impartation comes with desire yeah. and increase yeah. as you run after what you see you want. Right. Yeah. That's why trading yeah. into Revelation yeah. is bringing the impartation. Yeah. Because as an, I, I, I'm not saying that I'm anybody in this room spiritual father except those who are really my spiritual children. But what I bring is... Something that if you take it and you sow into it and you grab and hold of the revelation and you go practice it and you go take it home with you and you meditate on it and you run with it, it will change your life. But if you hear it and run with it to, to the next meeting and forget about it, what I said will have no life. 
And it's the same with your pastor, it's the same with any other leader, with any other meeting you go to. What you receive has to go into you. Yeah. You have to meditate on it. It has to become one with you. Yeah. You have to literally allow it to soak you completely and utterly by engaging it. Right. And I remind you, when it's a living word proceeding from a son or a daughter of the Most High, you have the ability to step into it again because there's no time and space in the Spirit. Yeah. So the heavens open up to such an extent that when you hear what you want and you understand that you want that, that you can go into it and receive the fullness of it. <clears throat> That's why we need to understand that we're spirit beings. That's why we have to enhance our spirit by constantly being aware of it, going into the kingdom of heaven with it, letting it grow and mature, eat of the fruit, swim in the, in the river of life, glory and fire, yeah. uh, have the ability to walk with Yahweh, eat of the fruit and eat and eat of the tree of life. The idea behind my spirit being is to constantly engage it as I go up and down, also to go to and throw on assignment according to what the seven spirits is teaching me and sending me into, not just on my own account. I don't you understand, you do not want to go walk to and throw on your own account. Yeah. It's looking for trouble. Yes. And the church has done that all their lives. Mm -hmm. By example, I bind you Satan. Mm -hmm. I bind the spirit of lust, I bind the spirit of perversion, I bind the spirit of, <laughs> of this thing, and I bind the spirit of that thing, and what else can I imagine of? I, I bind that spirit, and that spirit, and that spirit. Before I know it, I've got all those spirits hovering around me. Yeah. Because I engage with them. Yeah. Yes. Nothing is dealt with legally, I just use the magic charm which is Jesus, and I have no ability or power because I have not taken responsibility, therefore I really have no authority. But when I begin to step into that place where I deal with things legally, and I begin to understand that which the Father wants me to operate in is the fullness of His image, because I remind you, Yeshua looks at Peter and says, Satan tried to sift you like weed. But I said, no. Where do you think he went? He didn't bind Satan. He didn't come against him. He went into the mobile court where the accusations were made and dealt with it legally right there. And I believe that's where the Father's propelling us into. Exciting, isn't it? Let's stand. Thank you, Yeshua. Thank you, my King. <coughs> Father, we just want to come before your throne right now. And as we, as your sons and daughters, as we literally propel ourselves through the Holy Spirit into the kingdom of heaven, looking at you face to face, eyeball to eyeball, sitting, standing in front of you, whichever you choose to do, just hanging on what comes out of you, just holding on to your glory and just soaking ourselves in you, eating of you, drinking of you. Father, I pray that everything that's been spoken of, all the little nuggets that were thrown out, Father, everything we, we've heard, we hold on to, we want to become, we want to walk in. I pray, Father, that we'll engage with it. I pray that you'll give us the ability to open up those portholes that is made available for your sons and spirit beings to go into and let us engage. Let's go in. Let's not just meditate on the Word, but let's become the fullness of the Word as we become one with you, as we become absolutely soaked in the fullness of who you are, Yeshua. I pray, Father, that as the glory surrounds your sons and daughters and the fire of Yahweh is in and around us, that we will begin to affect the earth. As a matter of fact, we will begin to affect everything we touch, everywhere we go, everywhere we place our feet. I pray, Lord, we will start walking in the fullness, Father, as we change the atmosphere, as we deal with the familiar spirits in our lives, as we <coughs> bring our thoughts and intents of the heart to you in the kingdom of heaven, presenting ourselves to you as a living sacrifice. Father, just reminding ourselves that the steps is ordained. Every dimension of my life has been propelled by you, and your desire for me is to walk in the fullness of your will, your perfect will. And according to my destiny scroll. So I pray, Father, that everyone in this room will now, in the name of Yeshua, begin to go into that realm, the kingdom of heaven. Begin to see in this court of scrolls what is written on their scrolls. That which they need to do in the name of Yeshua, Father. So we can be propelled into the next phase, in the next, next dimension of our walk. And in the same breath, Father, that we will begin to understand that every one, one of the creation. The, creatures you created is there for us to engage so that we can be propelled in relationship propelled in intimacy with you <coughs> <coughs>
we will begin to honor the angelic father we'll begin to honor that which you've made available for us father god they love us they care for us they look after us they protect us yet we've never spoken to them we never engage with them lord i pray that the ecclesia will begin to see what you've made available father so we can begin to see the value in that which is available to us father we thank you for who you are lord i thank you that we can walk as your image bearers in the fullness of the earth father just like joshua and his his um, men of war father caleb and the fullness of standing at 80 saying that i'm stronger today than what i was when i was 40. but i pray that you'll begin to show us the fullness of the power that's available for the sons for the daughters for the ecclesia lord we love you we praise you we thank you for who you are in the name of yeshua amen